Hey everybody and welcome to another video. This video we're going to look at animations. Before I get started I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who supported this channel by subscribing or giving us a thumbs up and commenting in the comments or anybody who has become a patron on Patreon or a subscriber on the subscribe star. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Then uh, thank you very much to all of those people. If you do want to support the channel, by all means, give us a subscribe. Hit the notification icon. Give us a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, links to Patreon are in the description below. So let's jump right into this then. Animation in Daz Studio is kind of a double-edged sword. It's really easy and got a lot of powerful features, but at the same time, it's incredibly slow. And nine times out of ten, because of its slowness or because of a lack of understanding of how the system works, you will tend to find that a lot of people who include DAS Studio animations in their computer games aren't really doing a very good job. They're robotic looking, they're just sort of half second loops um, that make the characters look robotic and unrealistic. And to be honest, it tends to break the immersion for well a lot of people myself included so let's look at how we can improve on that <clears throat> i've got a character loaded into my scene we've got a costume on her just so that she's not standing there in the nip i've deliberately not put any hair on her right now because we're going to look at hair and deforce in a later video um, in this video we're just going to look at the very very basics now she's currently in a pose it's um you know <laughs> It is what it is. We're going to basically look at how to animate this character in a really, really, really basic way so that you can get some understanding of how the system works. Now, if you haven't got these tabs at the bottom, then you can find them in the windows in the tabs slash panes. And you've got timeline and there's an animate to on there as well. So we're going to plop this up and we're going to select the timeline. And as you can see, it's got 0 to 30 on a ruler along the top. Now we're going to change that. You're going to see this total 31 because 0 is also classed as a frame. So you've got 0 frames to 5 is actually 6 frames and then 5 to 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30. So if you want 60 to appear there, then you have to tap in 61 as you can see now. So we are currently uh, rendering at 30 frames per second which means we have now two seconds here we can see this here FPS 30 so that's one second and that's two seconds whether or not we use all two seconds for this video is irrelevant that's how you do it so if you wanted to do you know a 10 second you'd have to change that to 301 so that you could see all 10 seconds on there alternatively you can just um, do that in smaller chunks now before we get started on this full disclosure there is a reason why i said it's incredibly slow if you're someone who has to wait for sort of four hours to get one single render fairly common in dash studio that studio you know most people are you're going to be looking anywhere between 20 minutes to you know a good few hours for a single render now imagine every single one of those renders is one frame Dash Studio doesn't do any funky magic to make it render a single frame faster when you're doing a video. So if you're rendering a, a video, you're going to be looking at a very, very, very long render time. I've, I'm running on an i9 with a 1070 Ti, which is, I would say, an intermediate setup. And to do a two second clip, you're looking at easily six to seven hours. And that's just a character with no background. So, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it's going to take a long time. Well, that being said, because it takes such a long time to do a, vi a video, you need to make sure that you're doing it properly and that you're getting good looking animations. Otherwise, you're spending six to ten hours for two seconds of crap. So, you know, and that's not meant as a jab at any particular game developers or um any animators who use Dash Studio or anything, what well, it is just a simple fact is that the overwhelming majority of people who animate in Dash Studio don't really know what they're doing or they aren't taking the time to render each frame out 
um, make sure that it looks great. So you have these weird robotic looking animations, particularly in adult games. It looks like two toasters being banged together with a pair of boobs stuck on the front of one of them. It's really not attractive. So we've got the character on frame zero in this pose and we want her to move into another pose over the course of say a second maybe a second and a half depends on the pose that we're going to change into so we're going to go into our smart content and we're going to just pick up another pose so now what we're going to do is we're going to drag our timeline to i'm going to say 40 frames and then we're going to pop this in now what you can see is that a keyframe appeared here and that's basically recorded all of the bone positions translations and rotations in 3d space at this point there are no other calculations um, or, or recordings of the positions of those bones between 0 and 40 so what the system is going to do is very robotically it's going to look at each joint at the position that it's in in this frame and the position that it's in in this frame and it's simply going to rotate the joint until it's in the right place so you're going to get a very smooth and a very robotic change of pose like that and if we hit play you'll see it play out that way so really all she's doing is bringing her legs together and changing her shoulder position ever so slightly and as you can see there's no easing in or easing out it's just a very robotic point a to point b like so and if you wanted to you could render that um you know perfectly fine now something that i'd like to point out is that you can see her hands aren't really touching her hips and this is one of those things that's going to be a dead giveaway when you render out your animations if you half assed it is that it's bad enough when you see it in actual still shots in renders, but if you see it in video and you see people not actually touching, or you know, people not connecting, it's, you know, and it's such an easy thing to fix. You simply click and drag until they're in the right place and then you can get in closer. Move yourself around and then you can see that that's almost touching now. So we're gonna bring that a little bit closer and then we can bend the individual fingers to make sure that they are actually making contact with the hip. And then you can repeat the process with this hand as well. And obviously you do have to be mindful of the fact that if there's a smoothing modifier on the clothes, then it is gonna go kind of wacky if you get too close, in which case you'll have to turn off the smoothing modifiers. Um, but yeah, that's a different story. Um, so essentially that's really it. We've got our animation here and you can extend this as much as you want you can change it you can add another pose you know if we wanted to go a step further we could move it up to point 60 and then we could change our pose again to so i don't know something completely random like that and now it's going to keep looping but if we drag this all the way back to the beginning and we hit play you're going to see her change her pose like that and of course it's going to get to 60 the end of our animation then it's going to loop back and skip so there it is so in terms of really really simple animations that's how it's done thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye